Hi everyone and welcome back to their common tennis video. Today is going to be part four of how to pick a tennis racket and today what I'm going to be talking about is how to pick the proper string, string tension, and string gauge when you're going to get strings for your tennis racket. Now if you've missed the previous installments of this series, in part one of this series I talked about how to pick a tennis racket based on head size. In part two I talked about the different types of string patterns a racket can have and how they can have a different effect on your game. In part three I talked about how to pick the proper grip size that you're going to need for your racket and a couple techniques about how to actually see what your grip size is. I'm going to leave a link to those videos down below if you haven't seen them yet and I'm also going to link right above here the playlist that contains the full series of how to pick a tennis racket. Now before we get into today's video talking all about strings, make sure you guys do all those YouTube things that help this channel grow and help this community get even bigger, like hitting that like button right there, making sure that you guys subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the new videos coming out every Sunday, and please share this video to anyone you know that might need this information. Now when it comes to picking strings, oftentimes strings in the racket might break from playing too much or if you're buying an intermediate or more advanced level racket, they actually don't come with strings at all and it's up to you to pick the strings that are going to work best for you. So today I'm going to help you guys learn a little bit more about tennis strings and how to pick the right one for your racket and your play style. Some of the things that we're going to have to consider when we're taking a look at the different strings is first of all the type of string that's available, how to pick a tension for that string meaning how tight or how loose are you going to string it within the racket. We're also going to talk about the gauge of the string, meaning the thickness of the string and how that affects how it plays. And we're also going to talk about which ones are going to be the most budget friendly and would work best for your wallet. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is the types of strings that are available on the market. Now this is probably going to be the most extensive part of this video because there are several different kinds of strings that you can buy and they're made from different materials and serve different purposes and are marketed to different types of players. First I want to just name them all for you. So the types of strings that I'm going to be covering in this video are natural gut, synthetic gut, multi-filament, and nylon or polyester strings. And I'll also be talking a little bit about hybrid strings and what that means for your tennis racket. So first of all, starting off with a natural gut string. Now this used to be the most popular type of strings that pro players used to use. And it's actually made from cow intestines, which is where it gets its name natural gut. It makes sense, right? It's made from the gut of a cow, so they call it natural gut. Although a full racket setup of natural gut is not the most common thing on the pro tour right now, they're still considered to be the best option in terms of string because of their comfort and playability and the feel that you get off of the string. However, that great comfort and playability from the string does come with some drawbacks and the biggest being the durability and price of the string. The natural gut strings are gonna be the least durable of all these strings that I'm gonna be talking about today. Now, that's not so bad if it's a cheap string, but the problem is that natural gut strings are actually the most expensive on the list as well. And as you can see from these examples, these strings easily pass $50 when you're trying to pick up just one set for your racket. What happens to these strings is they actually start to fray very early and they break very quickly. So you can easily go through four or five sets in a month if you're somebody who plays a lot and especially if you hit with a lot of topspin. That topspin really causes those strings to fray a lot and breaks them very quickly. So you guys can see how this string can get really expensive. If you're paying 50 bucks for a set and you have to replace it four times in a month, you guys can add that up and you guys can see that this one is not a very budget friendly type of string. So the next string I wanna talk about is the synthetic gut string. So these synthetic gut strings are normally made from one piece of nylon and their purpose was to recreate the feel of a natural gut string but adding a little bit more durability to it and reducing the price for people. As you guys can see from this picture I'm putting up right here, the synthetic gut strings are a lot cheaper than the natural gut strings and it makes them a lot more affordable for most people. But a common problem just like the natural gut is that these synthetic gut strings will not be that durable either. And it's widely considered to be an inferior string, especially compared to natural gut when it comes to feel and comfort. Now, another option that's kind of in the same family trying to replicate the feel of the natural gut is what's called the multi-filament type of string. Now, this type of string does a way better job than the synthetic gut string, and that all comes down to the construction of the string. Now, multi-filament strings, instead of just using one nylon core, it's actually hundreds or even thousands of individual nylon filaments that wrap around each other to create that one string. Now, these multi-filament strings are gonna come the closest to replicating that natural gut feel. They're extremely comfortable, play very well, and you get excellent feel from the string. But these strings also tend to break quickly and are a little bit pricey as well. Now, I actually used to use multi-filament strings a lot, especially when I was younger and not breaking strings as much. 
But as soon as my game started to develop and I started hitting a lot more topspin, I was breaking these multi-filament strings within two weeks of purchasing them. And for me being on a tight budget at the time, it just didn't make sense for me to continue with multi-filament strings, even though they played really well. So as you guys can see from these examples, multi-filament strings typically range between $20 and $30 per set. So you guys can imagine if you're playing pretty consistently and you're breaking the strings every two weeks, again, this is a string that might add up on the budget, but if that's something you're not concerned about, it is a great option, just like natural gut. Now, next up is the polyester string or more typically called a poly string. And you're gonna hear most people refer to this type of string as a poly string. So as the name of this string implies, it's made of polyester or nylon. This is actually the string that is most widely used on the Pro Tour. And it's actually the type of string that I have in my racket right now and that I have been playing with for the last few years. So one of the things that makes a poly string such an easy choice for a lot of people is there's actually so many varieties of polys available that you're very likely to find one that's gonna suit your game. So manufacturers have really figured out different ways that you can make them. So one of the things that they actually change is the cut of the string, so the actual surface area of the string is cut differently to create different effects, maybe more spin or more power for certain rackets. And the materials and even the colors that they use for it also affect the string. So manufacturers can do all kinds of different combinations to create a poly string that's gonna suit different types of players. And as you guys can see from this picture, there's all kinds of polys available on the market. This is a string that has the most variety and options for you to pick from. So some of the characteristics of a poly string is that they typically have a little bit less feel and comfort than some of the other strings like multi-filament, or natural gut that I mentioned earlier. But one thing that they do have as a huge bonus is the durability. Poly strings are extremely durable and tend to last a really long time. Even for heavy hitters, it's not uncommon for these strings to last over a month, even with consistent heavy hitting. Now, beyond just being durable, these strings are also pretty affordable. The prices of the string typically range between $10 and $25, and of course, the price change depending on the quality and type of poly string that you're buying. And because these strings are so durable and an affordable price point, these are the most budget-friendly strings that you can get. Now, finally, I wanna talk a little bit about hybrid stringing as well. So although a hybrid is not a type of string on its own, what that actually means is that you're taking two different types of strings and you're combining them in your racket. So you're gonna have one type of string as your main and another as the cross. So this allows you to have all kinds of different combinations in your racket that you can tailor and, and tweak to suit your game. So the most typical combination is to blend a natural gut or multi-filament string with a poly string. Now, the reason people do this, including Roger Federer, so he actually uses this type of hybrid setup in his racket, is because they get a lot of feel and comfort from that natural gut string or multi-filament, but then they also get the added boost of more durability from the poly string. So it's a great combination that people can put into their rackets to try to get the best of both worlds from those strings. So the next thing that you guys need to think about besides just the type of string that you're buying is the string tension that you're gonna be using on your racket. Now, string tension refers to how tight the strings are gonna be strung on your racket. Tension on a racket typically ranges between 40 pounds of pressure and 60 pounds of pressure on the racket. A basic rule of thumb that you guys can follow is the tighter the string is in the racket bed, the more control you're gonna have over your shot. The lower the string tension, the more power and pop you're gonna get from that string. However, one thing to consider is how different types of strings actually react to different types of tensions. Now, let's take poly strings for an example. Because of the material and durability of that string, those strings can be strung at a lower tension, typically in the 40s. It's not uncommon to see to be strung at 45 pounds or even lower sometimes. Because of the material and durability of that string, it can handle being at that lower tension without compromising the string as much. And it's actually gonna provide you with a little bit more feel and power that those strings are typically missing. On the other hand, if you're gonna take a multi-filament or a natural gut string and string it within that range, you're gonna notice that the durability of the string is just not gonna hold up. Those strings are gonna break extremely quickly at that tension. So beyond just looking what works best for your game in terms of the string tension, you also need to see what the manufacturer recommends to make sure that it holds up in terms of playability and durability. And to make things a little more complicated, if you're going for a hybrid setup, you can actually do two different types of string tensions on the different strings in the hybrid setup. Now, my final point is gonna be on the gauge of the string. What I'm referring to is the thickness of the string. Now, the gauge of the string ranges ranges between 15 and 19. And you're gonna see on the package that I'm gonna highlight right here, you can see that this string comes in a variety of gauges that are listed on the package itself. Now, one thing to keep in mind is a little bit counterintuitive when it comes to the gauge. You'd think that the lower the gauge, the thinner the string, but it's actually the opposite. 
the lower the gauge you pick, the thicker the string is gonna be, and the higher the gauge, the thinner the string is gonna be. Now again, just like I did for the string tension, I'm gonna give you guys a basic rule of thumb when it comes to string gauge. So if you're going for a lower gauge of string, meaning a thicker string, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a lot more durability on that string, but you're gonna lose a little bit of playability and comfort from it. If you choose to go the other way and go for a higher gauge or a thinner string, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose a little bit of durability, but you're gonna gain a little bit more pop from that string and a little bit more comfort and playability as well. So now when we take all that information together, you notice that there is an infinite amount of combinations when it comes to picking a string for your racket. My main message here is, is don't be afraid to experiment with different types of strings and tensions and gauges to find what works best for you. My recommendation is to go for a setup that's gonna complement your game, that's gonna accentuate the things that you're already doing on court. And so if you're a player who likes to be aggressive hit powerful shots you're going to want to combine the string and tension and gauge that's going to complement that style of game and the same is true for any style of game that you might have and of course another important thing that you're going to want to consider is which one's going to fit into your budget all right guys that wraps up my main points on picking a string and i hope that you guys found what you're looking for with this video and that it's going to help you guys out when it comes to picking a string if you're watching this and maybe you know a little bit more about strings and i missed something please leave a comment down below to help people out and give them even more information about strings as always everyone Thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel. If you haven't done so already, hit that like button down below, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to share the video with somebody who might need this information. I'll be bringing you guys a brand new tennis video every Sunday, so I hope to see you all back here next week. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. Take care, and I'll see you next time.